Good morning, everyone, or afternoon, if you're on the East Coast. This is uh, Steve Blackwell, the Vice President of uh, Sales and Marketing from Dynesthetics. Today, we're going to be having a, a special live webinar broadcasting live from the University of Utah in their simulation lab. We have uh, graciously been invited and are using several of the folks here that regularly staff the simulation lab, and we'll be making those introductions in just a couple of minutes. Um, but today's uh, webinar will deal specifically with how the University of Utah utilizes the Vitals Bridge in their high fidelity simulations and uh, with uh, standardized patients. And we will show you both of those simulations. Uh, well, it would be probably seven or eight minutes each. We'll talk a little bit about uh, pricing as well here. And we've got two different rooms set up. Uh, complete with uh, cameras and vitals bridges and monitors and mannequins. Well, mannequin and one, we have a, a live standardized patient. So with that, um, let me introduce who will be here. We have Dr. Derek Sakata. He is an on-hand anesthesiologist at the University of Utah. We have Soren Hone, who is one of the simulation experts here, uh, as well as Diane Tyler. Uh, Noah Syroid is our chief engineer with Vitals Bridge uh, and also our co-inventor. He will be participating today uh, and our standardized patient is Annalise Erickson. So we'd like to thank all of them for, for joining us uh, in our webinar today. Uh, as always, I wanted to make mention that we will have, um, this will be posted afterwards live on our YouTube channel and we will send out emails with the direct link. Uh, so if you'd like to view this or if you have people that are part of your staff that were not able to attend, they'll be able to go and view that afterwards also. Uh, also, you'll notice that if you're using this on a computer or on a phone or a tablet, there is a drop-down menu that allows you to ask questions. Feel free to send questions in at any time, and we'll try to intercept and answer those questions as we go. Um, and then uh, anything else that pops up, We'll try to handle, we're, it is a little bit of a technical challenge because we've got a lot of different components going on at once, but I think we've got this figured out. So, so uh, here's our agenda, our introduction we've just done, standardized patient, we'll start there uh, you know, over in our, in our uh, other lab in just a minute, and then we'll jump back here for a high fidelity simulation. Both of them will be using the Vitals Bridge. We'll take questions and answers, and between, I'm going to move the brief discussion on pricing between standardized patient and high fidelity simulation, uh, because they're going to need a couple of minutes to move from one room to the next, so I'll move that up, and then we'll end with a description of our final, um, or our next webinars that we've got coming up. Okay, we're ready to jump right into our first part of our demonstration. We're going to uh, show how to use the vitals bridge with a standardized patient, and Noah, Really, the Vitals Bridge allows you to maximize and utilizes, utilize standardized patients like you've never been able to use before. Yeah, Steve, the, the value of the Vitals Bridge here is that we have our uh, standardized patient, and I'll show you a, a brief scene of our standardized patient here with the Vitals Bridge showing vital signs monitors. And what we can do is we can override those signals so that it looks like um, Annalise, who happens to at this moment be hypoxic with tachycardia and hypotension as opposed to uh, being young and healthy and uh, having normal vital signs. So in this case, we can actually override those vital signs with something uh, to show a adverse event. Yeah, notice that she's wearing an SpO2 Pro. Hold that up, at least there you go. We're going to show you how, even though she's wearing that, we can program, and as Noah says, override what her vitals are with whatever we use, whatever we want it to be using the LEAP software. That's right. So let me just briefly show you the LEAP, what's set on the LEAP software at the moment. And so we can see that we have the vital signs set to hypo, hypotension, tachycardia, and a low SpO2 value, hypoxia. And um, this is all being driven by the vitals bridge connector. So it's providing, again, the bridge between the uh, instructor application and the vitals bridge. So as you'll see on the monitor there, you're going to see uh, we actually just ran a, a blood pressure cycle as well. And it's going to, instead of actually showing what her live blood pressure is, it's going to show the blood pressure that Noah, you've already programmed in using LEAP. 
That's correct. And so it's working through that blood pressure cycling right now. Without the vitals bridge, of course, there's not a way to do this because there's no way to override a real patient's data or vital signs. Not with the real vital signs monitor, that's right. So this is a, this is a real clinical monitor that's used in uh, the clinical environment. And so we see a, a new blood pressure has come up and uh, showing that hypertension. Okay. Let's, uh, let's talk about our scenario and what this simulation will actual, actually entail. Yeah, our simulations are in two parts. So this first simulation will be a standardized patient simulation. Um, and we'll just give a demonstration of, of what that simulation might look like. Um, they'll both be brief simulations, you know, five, 10 minutes. Um, the second simulation will we'll actually conduct with a uh, high fidelity patient simulator in a uh, mock operating room where we're 30 minutes into the uh, anesthetic uh, and uh, general anesthesia. And so 30 minutes into the, the surgery. One of the purposes of doing this is also to show you the compatibility that the Vitals Bridge has with multiple monitors. And they don't all have to be, uh, you know, um, ICU or operating room monitors. They can be these pre-op monitors that are quite simple. And in fact, we've received feedback from a lot of our customers that they are looking for ability to use these simple monitors in, in training. Yeah, that's right. Okay, why don't you, why don't you present the, the patient uh, data here, introduce our, our participants, and we'll jump right into it. Sounds good. So here is our, our simulated patient in, in both parts of the simulation. Um, we have a 27-year-old female who's presenting for a surgery, a splenectomy, and uh, has a history of ITP, and her ASA classification is a 2. And we're going to start off the, the standardized patient simulation where the preoperative exam has just been completed by the anesthesiologist, and the patient is ready to be transported to the operating room. Uh, we have two participants in this simulation. We have um, Annalise Erickson, who is our uh, patient. Wave to us, Annalise. <laughs> and we have Diane Tyler, who, who's going to play the role of the learner in this simulation, who is our, our nurse. So we have Diane step in here. Say hello. Hi. Okay. So are we, uh, are we ready to go here? We're ready. All right. Let's, um, we're, yeah, we're just going to set your vital signs back to, to normal here. One moment. So again, even though we're using a patient monitor, we are still using the LEAP software to set all the different parameters that we need. Okay. You should be able to see on that, yeah, there you go. You should be able to see on your screen as NOAA updates the LEAP software immediately you see the reflection of that data on the, the patient monitor. Yeah, so very briefly, here's what our vital signs are set to at the moment. Good morning, Annalise. Hi. I'm Diane. Hi. I'm your nurse. I'm going to get you ready for surgery today. Okay. All right. Um, can you tell me, when was the last time you made a drink? Um, I had a little bit last night. Okay. Um, it was like around six, maybe. Okay. I'm taking your blood pressure now, so right. You may feel like get tight. Okay. So just relax your arm. Did okay. you have anything to drink this morning? Uh, no. Okay. All right. Great. Um, I see that you signed the consent. Mm -hmm. The doctor's been in and talked to you. Do you have any questions? Do you understand what we're going to do today? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Okay, I'm great. Nervous. Oh, I can understand that. Hopefully, I can help you a little bit by giving you some information about what's going to happen when you leave for the operating room and then when you go mm -hmm. through the recovery room and then when you come back to us. Okay. All right. Hopefully, that will help. Okay. Um, I need to have you take your earrings off. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can't send you to the operating room with those on. <coughs> All right. I'm going to make sure this gets put with your clothes. I, I have a history of asthma, mm -hmm. um, so I'm just starting to feel a little bit tight. 
tight, maybe. Um, probably because I'm nervous. All right, I think, yeah, I can see that your heart rate's going up a little bit. And um, let me go ahead and read some. Okay, I want you to breathe through your mouth with your mouth open. Deep breath. And out. Good. Again. And out. Good. Go ahead and sit forward a little bit. Deep breath in. It's getting tired. Okay, one more breath. And the other. You sound really queasy. Um, did you bring your own B-roll inhaler? Uh, yeah, it's my bag. In your bag? Okay. Now you can see your sounds are really dropping. It's usually two do it for you. Sure. Okay. All right. I'll keep an eye on you and see how you keep doing. Okay. Make sure that you um, come back to where you're breathing easier. I'll let your anesthesiologist know okay. you've had to use your inhaler this morning. Okay. All right. Okay, keep taking some breaths and relax. That's a little bit better. Turn it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Keep going. Sats are still just a little bit low, so I'll just keep watching and make sure you're doing okay. Uh, All right. More. Okay. All right, good. I'll let you. I'll keep that with you, just in case you feel you feel like you need a little bit more before we head to the operating room. Okay. Okay. If it happens again, they can take care of that in the operating room okay. without your inhaler. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. It's feeling better. Good. Good. It looks like. Um, from what I'm seeing on your vital signs monitor here, it looks like it's starting to work and um, you're starting to breathe a little bit easier from the numbers that I see. So you take some good deep breaths and relax. I can see you're still struggling. <laughs> you're going to be okay today. You're going to leave here probably in about 10 minutes and I'll take you up to the operating room. They will put something in your IV that will help you relax. Okay. All right. And I hate to tell you this, but your bobby pins are going to have to come oh, out of your hair. But okay. I can wait till the very end. Okay. We'll take your bobby pins out and okay. get your hat on. All right. All right. It looks like things look good. You feel like you're breathing easier? Yeah. Okay, good. Let me take a quick listen. Okay. Okay, again, deep breath. And out. Okay. You do sound much better. Okay. Good. Yeah. Feels better. Okay. Good. All right. I think we're ready to go ahead and get you. Oh, yeah. Your breathing is much better. I can see your saturations are up to 100% and your heart rate has come down. So, right. great. We'll okay. go ahead and get you ready to go over. Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Okay, so to review what just happened, um, we had a preoperative setting with a standardized patient and a nurse. And uh, let, me, let me mute in there so we don't hear the noise that's going on. There we go. I think that better? Nope. There we go. Okay, now we've got them muted. Um, with the uh, Vitals Bridge in place, you can see how they were using actual pre-op monitors in order to be able to interact with that patient, with the standardized patient. Um, the blood pressure was set using the LEAP software. Everything you, you were able to watch as Noah manipulated the LEAP software to give the exact readings that they wanted to show while the standardized patient was briefed on how she should act. So it can be a very powerful tool when uh, when used with the vitals bridge. So, in the meantime, if you've got any questions, feel free to uh, send in your questions. We're happy to answer those. Um, we have one question that has come in so far. Let me answer that. 
First question is, how long has the Vitals Bridge been on the market? And uh, the Vitals Bridge has been used in VA hospitals now for two years and has been sold exclusively by Lairdall. Uh, and we have made a lot of improvements to the product. Um, it used to be that you had to do a modification to your mannequin for Pulse Ox. That's no longer the case as it's now built right into the Pulse Ox probe. And uh, so now we are taking it to, because of demand, uh, to regular hospitals and, and uh, simulation labs across the country and soon internationally. So thank you for that question. Let's see if there's any others here. Another question is, what mannequins are currently supported by the Vitals Bridge? And Noah, I think the... The, the question there is, is the, do the mannequins require LEAP? Because we work with the SimMan 3G and any of the Laredal mannequins that use LEAP. Yeah, so uh, that's right. The, the, the mannequins that use LEAP, and, and there's a whole variety of them that are supported by LEAP now. And, and um, that is one thing. If, if you are running still on the old version of the, the uh, instructor application, Laredal application, um, strongly would urge you to upgrade to LEAP. There is a, a lot of great support and they're making great improvements there, but also the Vitals Bridge works um, best with LEAP and is compatible with that. Um, those that have SIM pads, we are looking at uh, our compatibility there and we should know pretty soon whether um, we're able to be compatible right out of the box and should know within a, within a week or two on that piece. So just we're we're continuing on. So this is a, this is kind of a, a continuum with the simulation where we just finished our preoperative setting. Now we're going to kind of jump right into the middle of our of our operation here. So about 30 minutes into the, the surgery, which is a, a, an open splenectomy, uh, general anesthetics been given. Um, we're using a SimMan 3G high fidelity patient simulator, and we'll have we'll set up the vitals bridge here in just a moment. So uh, we'll, when we get started, we'll, we'll be mid-case, and uh, that's kind of where we'll, we'll ha potentially have some sort of adverse event that our anesthesiologist needs to uh, figure out. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and uh, share our camera here with you so you can see what's going on. I just need to do a little bit of setup here. I okay. just need to get the mannequin running. Okay. Trade places with you, Steve. So we're about 30 minutes into the surgery, and, and uh, we're pretty much set up here. Um, it's going to be a general anesthetic. You can see our high-fidelity patient simulator kind of hiding behind the curtains there. And the vitals bridge is shown on the anesthesia cart. Um, of course, that could be placed uh, uh, anywhere that, uh, uh, in terms of a setup, it could be placed anywhere. So the vital signs monitor is actually shown on the anesthesia machine, and then we've kind of uh, enlarged it with a, a video feed uh, here on the left side of the screen. Um, so let's do a quick introduction of everybody. Um, so you can see Derek Sakata, Dr. Derek Sakata. He's an anesthesiologist here at the University of Utah. He will be our anesthesiologist participant today. We have Zoran. Own. And Zoran, Zoran, peek out a little further. You're you're behind the monitor. There you are. Uh, Zoran is our uh, esteemed surgeon, surgical colleague today. And we also have Diane Tyler. Diane, step a little towards Derek. Perfect. And say hello. So Diane will be a, our uh, circulating nurse for this simulation. And uh, really quickly, I just wanted to orient you to the vital signs on the monitor here. Yeah, so we're zooming into the, the Vitals Signs view. So this is just a Philips Intelliview MP70 that we're using today. The top waveform is, of course, the EKG with a heart rate of 80 at right now. Um, pulse oximetry, we actually have the probe on the mannequin's finger, and uh, that's providing the, the plethysmography simulation along with the SpO2. Uh, we have an arterial line in place with an arterial blood pressure waveform. And then our last, the yellow number, is our capnography with the entitled CO2. And then on the bottom right side, you can see in pink, uh, 36.2, that is the uh, temperature. It's probably worth mentioning, Noah, here also that uh, in the control room in the back, 
We are running a computer with Leap, Leap software, and our Vitals Bridge connector software. Yeah, that's right. Let me just real quickly show that to you here. So here's our Vitals Bridge connector software and our instructor application here. And so this is running, uh, we just, once we start the turn on the Vitals Bridge, we run this software and we connect to both the mannequin and the Vitals Bridge, and it's producing just a, a bridge of communication between the two applications. Um, and then the right side is the uh, LEAP instructor application. Um, Dr. Scotta, if you could just cycle the blood pressure, uh, the non-invasive blood pressure, and we will uh, get things oriented here and get started. Throw the microphone out there to the yeah. lab as well so we can hear them. I'm going to set some baseline vitals here real quick. Okay, and... Uh, And let's change our microphone out to. Okay. All right, everyone, are we ready? How about it? Did you yeah. give it any antibiotics? Yeah, antibiotics were given. We had two grams of Vancef. Okay. Uh, about 20 minutes before it's given. Okay, great. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you think you got down there? Uh, so far, maybe six, seven hundred. Okay, so maybe that tachycardia that I've seen might be due to that. Hey, Diane, can we get some blood to the room? Can you, I, I believe she has time to cross me a couple of units. So you want two units? Yeah, let's get two units, yes. Okay, I'll go ahead and get some blood right up. Get a little fill up right now, open up my fluids wide, both sides here. Still pretty oozy down there? Mm hmm. Okay. I'm going to start cranking in some fluids here. See if I can squeeze that in too. I'm going to temporize another 100 mics of funnel up in here just so we can get some fluid and oil more in. How much do you think you lost so far? Mm -hmm. Now it's probably more like 700. 700, okay. How, how much longer for the blood? Uh, first units here, I've got a unit reserve. Okay, great, Let's perfect. Let's go ahead and get this first okay. check. You go ahead and check it with uh -huh. me. Uh-huh, yep. All right. Annalise Erickson. Mm -hmm. Medical record numbers 8527344. Four. Okay. All right. Okay, O-positive, positive. I've got a unit 1580093. Okay. Correct. 00294 expires uh, July 2000. No. Uh, no. July 2015. Okay, we're All good. All right, good. Okay. All right. That's close. We're going like leak all over the place here. Okay. 
How many units do you want me to try and keep ahead? How are we doing down there, Soren? I think we're getting a little better. You're getting a little better there? Yeah, okay. getting better. Why don't we just hold right now the two units let me get this one in here. All right. I'm going to turn that on. And thank you. I got this other unit going in pretty quickly here as well. Let us know if you think you get any more into more bleed. I might put another line in if you think you're okay. I not, think so far we're really good. It's getting better. Yeah. Okay. A little more going on. And I got your man set back here too. And in the meantime, another one might put a left ring. Got that unit going in here, sorry. So Great. pretty quickly here we'll get her under control. Got a leader in as well. Squeeze that in. It's like we're holding our pressures right now. We'll turn on 100 percent oxygen anyway, even though our saps are okay here. Second units here, if you want to. Okay, great, thank you. It's like we're getting some response from her, so that's good. Yeah, I think the bleeding is it's doing really good. You got more bleeding there? No, I'm okay. You're okay? Yeah. Okay. Let me turn your acidic back up just a tad here. Yeah, it looks like she's stabilizing out here, so she's looking good. I think we're ahead on the bleeding here. EBL. Do you think about total 750? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, we're kind of back to baseline here. We're looking good. That unit's finished. I'll just probably finish this other side over here on the fluid. Great. Thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. Our next webinar, we're going to actually go through process. We're okay. I bought a, a vitals bridge, now what? Taking it out of the box, hooking it up, hooking it to the monitor, uh, an out of the box experience so that people are, we can get them jump started. So with that, Noah, any last comments? No, thank you so much. Okay, thank you for watching and uh, we'll be posting a link to this webinar so that you can share it shortly. We'll send that around via email and we'll look for you in our next webinar in the next couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank you.